Hola y bienvenidos a otra lección del español. Hey, today we're going to be working on some of the new vocab. Um, those that are my students that are in the classroom with me. Uh, we've already talked about a bunch of these words. We've gotten going with these. Uh, now today we're going to just do a quick review of some of them. Those of you that aren't my students, that's okay. You can still benefit from this. We've got some new words. I'll highlight them, point out which ones they are. Okay, but let's get right to the new words. Let's practice with some of these new words we have. Um, got a few questions here, little bitty conversations. Let's see how it goes. Here we go. All right, um, first one. Uh, hace dos horas que, you, you'll remember that from, from last lessons, last, uh, last batch of lessons. Hace dos horas que estamos en esta tienda de ropa. No quiero estar aquí. ¿Dónde está la salida? ¿Dónde está la salida? Salida, there's one of our new words. Hace dos horas que estamos en esta tienda de ropa. No quiero estar aquí. I don't want to be here. ¿Dónde está la salida? Where's the exit? La salida está al lado de la entrada. La salida está al lado de la entrada. Okay, so the exit is to the next, to the side of, next to, la entrada, the entrance. Pues, ¿dónde está la entrada? No la veo. Where is the entrance? No la veo. I don't see it. We'll, we'll talk about this la another day. These are direct object pronouns. No la veo. I don't see it. So uh, let's just go through this one more time. Remember, entrada is entrance. Salida is exit. Hace dos horas que estamos en esta tienda de ropa. No quiero estar aquí. ¿Dónde está la salida? La salida está al lado de la entrada. Pues, ¿dónde está la entrada? No la veo. Okay. Here we've got, um, we're talking about clothing. This chapter we're talking all about purchases and buying things. And we're also talking about the past tense. But for right now we're just talking about clothing, how to identify it. We've got a couple things here. We've got um, uh, de solo un color. It's just one color. It's a solid color. De solo un color. Only one color. Um, colores vivos. Colores vivos. Like vivid, vibrant. Um, you remember the verb vivir means to live. Well, vivid means bright, vibrant, full of life. Bright. So colores vivos, bright colors. Um, camisa de solo un color. Uh, just only one color. Um, and then we also had oscuro. Oscuro, like obscure. If something is obscure, it's in the darkness. It's not well known. So, oscuro, without the B, oscuro means dark. So, un azul. Este, este azul no es un azul oscuro. Es un azul claro, clear, light. Azul claro y azul oscuro. Let's take a peek at a few of these. ¿Prefieres esta camisa de solo un color o la camisa de muchos colores vivos? ¿Prefieres esta camisa de solo un color o la camisa de muchos colores vivos? No me gusta ni la camisa de solo un color ni la de muchos colores. Prefiero la camisa de azul oscuro. Hey, let's take a look at this. Um, you might be looking at this saying, Hey, he left out the word camisa on that second one. Ni la camisa de solo un color, ni la de muchos colores. Um, in this case, we're leaving out the camisa. We're going to talk about this, this chapter, how you can avoid repetition by just saying, La de muchos colores. Okay, so let's run through that one again real quick. ¿Prefieres esta camisa de solo un color o la ca o la camisa de muchos colores vivos. No me gusta ni la camisa de solo un color, ni la de muchos colores. Prefiero la camisa de azul oscuro. Okay, on this next one we've got a few, few phrases that we're going to be using. Hecho, you might have seen on tags or on stickers, hecho en México, something like that, hecho. You probably figured, well, that must mean made in Mexico, hecho en México. In this chapter, we're using a phrase, ¿De qué está hecha? Of what is it made? ¿De qué está hecha? 
And then the response would be, esta hecha de, it's made of. For example, uh, last chapter, last unit, we were talking about um, gold and silver. So you might have something, ah, este anillo, de que esta hecho? Esta hecho de oro. De que esta hecha? Of what is it made? Esta hecha de, it is made of. And then we, we talk about a few of the things, things we talk in this chapter about some of the things of which things are made. I hate English. We talk of some of the things of which things are made. Actually, I love English, but it's fun sometimes to think of prepositions and speaking properly. Um, so right now, some English teachers probably just rolling their eyes at me. Sorry. Okay, me gusta. Let's talk about the que esta hecha and the materials that things are made of. Me gusta tu blusa. De que esta hecha? Notice um, that blusa is feminine, so we say hecha. Está hecha de tela sintética. Está hecha de tela sintética. Now we can recognize that sintética must be synthetic, so we'll just figure that tela must mean fabric or fiber, something like that. Me gusta tu blusa. ¿De qué está hecha? ¿Está hecha de tela sintética? No, no está hecha de tela sintética. Esta blusa está hecha de seda. Seda. Seda is another word this chapter. Silk. No está hecha de tela sintética. Está hecha de seda. Silk. Uh, muchas corbatas, mini corbatas, están hechas de seda. Um, pero en este ejemplo, la blusa está hecha de seda. So what are some other things we can say things are made of? Okay. También podemos decir lana. Lana, made of wool. Cuero, cuero, mm. cuero, está hecho de cuero, leather, or algodón, algodón. This is another one of those words of Arabic origin. Uh, over 5,000 words in Spanish have Arabic origin. Yeah, we could talk about this in class, about um, how Arabic became so prominent in Spanish. Such a part. So we have this al at the beginning, godón, like cotton, cotón, algodón, cotton. So, lana, cuero, algodón. Let's run through the, this example again. Me gusta tu blusa. ¿De qué está hecha? ¿Está hecha de tela sintética? No, no está hecha de tela sintética. Esta blusa está hecha de seda. No está hecha de lana. No está hecha de algodón. Y claro, no está hecho de cuero. Una blusa de cuero es ridículo. Okay, the que está hecha. And the last one we're going to talk about, actually we're not going to talk about this one, I'm sorry. The last one thing we're going to do in today's lesson is the, uh, is the three questions for my students. So if you're my students, here is your assignment for this lesson. Uh, complete sentence answers, please. Número uno. ¿De qué está hecho este guante de béisbol? ¿De qué está hecho este guante de béisbol? Give me a complete sentence answer for that one. Número dos. Si no quiero estar en una tienda, ¿qué busco? What do I look for? In the pista, your hint, no es la entrada. Once again, complete sentence answer. Si no quiero estar en una tienda, si no quiero estar en una casa, si no quiero estar en un lugar, ¿qué busco? What do I look for? En número tres, ¿este coche es de color oscuro? ¿Este coche es de color oscuro? Now, since it has more than one color, I could also say, ¿este coche es de colores oscuros? Now, don't just tell me sí o no. Give me a complete sentence response. Muy bien, y esta es la lección de hoy. Gracias por escuchar. Espero que hayan aprendido. I hope that you have learned. Unas palabras nuevas. Chao.